Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce you to Ian Valentine, founder of MiniWeb. Uh, last year, MiniWeb won Best of Show at IBC for Web TV category, and I'm sure this will be a very interesting demonstration. Ian is going to talk to us about his fully connected TV solution, Woomi, as it is on the Samsung. Over to Ian Valentine. Thank you very much, Tess. Thank you for turning out today to have a look at this. It's been an exciting year for many ways. 2010 seems to have become the year of connected TV. Everyone's excited about the whole industry. And it's something that miniweb has been working on since we spun out of Sky at the end of 2006. So we feel that we've got a very mature connected TV service platform. What you're going to see here is, I think, the future of connected TV. Um, I think most people realize that at the early stages when an industry is just waking up to a new phenomena, the first iterations of products that do this new thing, connected TV, internet video on the big screen in the living room, are not the end game. And I want to show you a little bit about where I think the user experience is going to end up. But this is not just a concept demo of what connected TV should be. This is a live service that is shipping now on a number of devices and in fact is going to be enabled on Samsung TVs before the end of the year under the brand name Wumi. So before I move into this, I need to explain a little bit about the purpose um, of our company in the industry. Everyone knows TVs are getting connected. Maybe a billion connected TV devices will be out there by 2015. And everyone knows video is going online. Theoretically, a device in a home, on a home network, could make a request to any server on the internet and pull a piece of video, right? If the video is there and it matches the codec and the protocols, theoretically, you can get to content. The problem in the industry that's facing at the moment is not how to get the transport, the connectivity between devices and providers. It's what's the user experience going to be and how can this content be monetized and discovered on these devices in the television sense. So MiniWeb is an enabler allowing more content to reach more devices and more devices to reach more content. I'm going to spend five minutes explaining how that works and I'm going to take you straight into a demo. So let's look at the way it works at the moment. A content provider such as Discovery has a pretty easy time getting on an A-brand TV like Samsung. He just has to build an app. It's a manufacturer-specific integration test, test exercise. But what content providers need really is a generic mechanism to get on a whole range of TVs. TVs today are very fragmented in geography and technology and capability. They want one integration point really that would get them onto many TVs. And when you look at the industry the other way around, for many manufacturers launching apps today, a handful of apps is not enough. When you're a manufacturer and you've got the top five apps, you're the same as your competitor. And the content providers, apps, functionality is basically the same. When you look at a user's point of view, he doesn't want the content and the functionality organized into silos. He actually just wants to find content. He wants the thing to work like TV. He wants a guide, if you like, a bit like the EPG, that lets him find what's on, what's available through the device from anywhere. And as we begin to look at this problem, we realize that manufacturers need access to a whole range of content providers, many of which probably wouldn't ever get around to building, testing, and deploying apps for the many different types of TVs that are out there. So in order for the integration points to be easy between content publishers and manufacturers, we need to come up with a generic integration method, something that allows content to be on more devices and devices to get access to more content. Unfortunately, the industry hasn't managed to do this through standardization. There's less, there's many standardization initiatives have come and gone over the years, and in many ways, manufacturers need to continue to innovate and change their products to keep up with evolving technologies such as 3D. So we can't ever expect all the technologies to be running the same hardware and software stack. So how is this going to actually work? I'm going to explain now how MiniWeb solves this problem of getting lots of content onto many types of devices. We don't serve the content and we don't own the content rights, but we interface with publishers by taking metadata from their playout systems, from their content management systems. <coughs> metadata that describes the URIs of the media files, how they want the branded play experience to work, their business models around payments and advertising. So this configuration data is fed into a service platform in the cloud which manages all of this data and has lots of services or facilities built into it. 
from this cloud-based service platform, we're able to deliver for the manufacturers a full connected TV service that supports the viewer. And what I mean by a full connected TV service that supports the viewer is a, a set of services built into the device that span all content providers. Viewers want to be able to have a single credit card and pay for content from anywhere. They want to be able to search once and find content from any provider. Maybe they want to have a playlist with items from different providers. Maybe they want to recommend content to their friends with a mechanism that's independent of the content provider that's built into the device. We provide this full connected TV service that is the umbrella set of services that a manufacturer needs to provide to differentiate their product over and above the content from content provider apps. And it also enables content to come on directly into the service without the providers having to build an app. Now uniquely, we make this service available in a wide range of TV technologies. Over on our stand today, we have it running on an HBB TV enabled television from a major Korean manufacturer. We have obviously it running as Woomi in the Samsung connected TVs. We have it running in an MP5 free sat box. We have it running in an Adobe Stagecraft flash enabled set top box. It really doesn't matter what the technology in the device is, as long as you have the smarts in the cloud to allow this service to happen. So we have, as I said, a number of technologies, and I'm going to show you how the interface looks on Samsung. Now that Samsung, when we started talking to Samsung, we understood they had a very mature developer environment, and they had a long queue of people, content providers, trying to get their apps onto the platform. But the door is only so big to get these apps through the testing process and onto the platform. What we really needed with Samsung, what Samsung really needed, was another door, another way to get content onto the platform that was a shortcut, a faster, easier way to get content published to the devices. And that door is called Woomi. And I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. I'm going to show it to you running inside Google Chrome, which I'm just going to load here on my PC. If you want to see it running in a real television, a real set-top box, then simply come to our stand straight after the meeting. Okay, let me just turn it down for a little bit here. So you notice, first of all, as soon as you enter Wumi, video is playing. Now we believe the definition of television is a trust relationship between the viewer and the device. The device keeps you entertained all the time. You'll notice this later on when I do some searches. The Woomi menu is a personal menu. My name is actually Profile 3 at the moment. I'm sorry about that, but I haven't renamed it. Inside Profile 3, I've got some favorites of content that I've actually viewed and watched before. In fact, here's a shuttle launch from a plane, something that I watched while I was testing the app earlier on. I can go in and do a search for anything I like across all content providers. If I was going to search for, say, NASA, for example, I know with Google showing their uh, product at the moment, textual search is quite important. Here I find a range of content around the topic NASA. If I play that content, what we do is we take you straight to the video. We believe TV should be entertainment first and interactivity second. Not like the web, which is interactivity first and entertainment second. So here I'm playing the video directly and you're going to say, where's it coming from? but it's coming from a content provider called Blinx. Now we provide a branded play experience for all of the content providers inside Wumi so that they can then interact with the viewer. You can search the Blinx repository where you're sort of at that content provider, or you can find recommended content or anything else you want to populate this menu with. The user can always, on the other hand, look at the global view and get the picture across all content providers. Now let me just tell you a bit about the play experience. If I let this clip finish, it would go on to a NASA fuel cell explosion. Then it would go on to the crew arrives for the NASA discovery mission. Essentially, we've created a virtual channel of content around NASA. If we skip forward in time to this clip here, we can jump to it just by selecting it. It's like jumping forward in time on a channel. This is from a different provider, ITN, rather than Reuters. The system automatically finds related content to every clip that we're on. And if I jump sideways to this related content, if crew arrives to this discovery mission or the satellites collide in space, then the related content becomes my main playlist. And for every item in this virtual channel, which is now new, I've got new virtual channels for every, every clip I'm watching. Let me just show you a, save I, uh, a search I did earlier on. In my uh, 
build up to this when I was playing with things, I searched for Redemption. And I found the Shawshank Redemption, the movie, right? Interesting enough, we could play this movie directly at 136 minutes from this provider called Box Office 365. But look at the related content that the system's found at the bottom. Relating to that film, it's found a special edition interview with Frank Darbock. It's found the Morgan Freeman interview. This is better than a DVD enhancement. It's dynamically created from internet video from multiple publishers. And we can just play it with a click of a button. Let's just go... Okay, it can't play the film, I know that, but that's the reason. The reason for that is because the um, transport stream uh, content, which is the actual film itself, won't play inside Crank. So let me show you a different interface. I'm going to just quickly show you um, a version in Flash. Right? Now this is a di completely different UI that is written in a different technology connected to the same service platform. I'm going to show you how we'd enhance linear TV with this. So if we were watching TV, we could maybe, for a TV channel, directly link into online content that relates to the TV channel we're on. Online content from their playout system, their catch-up TV service. We could also launch an app for the particular viewer, particular broadcaster. If we change channel here and go to, say, a completely different channel, they can be enhanced. So these ch broadcast channels are now being enhanced in the same way as the online content providers were in the previous example. Here you've got your system and you've got many, many more services like TV Buddies where you can pick your friend and you can share your stuff with them, send them a message, share a playlist. You can even go into your uh, message box and see recommendations coming from your friends and play them. This is a community that spans multiple publishers and multiple device manufacturers. We can look at pay for content as well. If we were to look at this music video, we find it's got pound signs or dollar signs by it. And if we were to try and select one of these pay for items, then the system is going to take a payment from a single registered credit card to allow me to access that premium rate content. I don't have to register my credit card with all different providers. So I'm giving you an idea, I think, here about how connected TV can really evolve. It mustn't be any harder than watching real TV. It must be easy to find content, to share content, and to buy content. Connected TV is just better TV. And at the moment, the current connected TV solutions are first generation. Here, as we move towards a solution that allows us to browse and, and, and surf internet video content as easily as we do the channels or the content of our PBR, this begins to make connected TV mass market. But one last thing I'd like to show you, which is the ability to like and dislike linear TV. You see I've got a green button and a yellow button here. When I was at Sky, we invented the red button. And the red button drilled into an interactive application based on what I was watching. Here, if I say I like or dislike linear TV shows, it drives a set of online recommendations that I can play straight away. So we're building up playlists and content that I can play from the internet based on my linear TV viewing habits. The whole solution is integrated into a single experience where the online content and the broadcast content work together to keep you entertained. So I think I've run out of time. I think that's my 15 minutes. I'd very much like to take some questions about the system. I'm very happy to let you see more at our stand, but I'm sure there are uh, some questions from the crowd that's been gathering us up and speaking. Any questions, please? You're all spellbound. All spellbound. Yeah. You know, I had one guy come up to the stand recently and say, well, they said to me last year, they said, Ian, I've seen this before. And I said, I don't believe you. We've been working on this top secret. I can't believe How can you have seen this before? And he goes, no, I've seen it. It's been in here. This is how I imagined it would be. We had another guy today, uh, yesterday in fact, come up to the stand and he was just lurking while we were doing a demo for someone and he just walked away, no, before he walked away he said to me, there's one problem with this here and I said, a problem? What's that? He said, yeah, I won't watch real TV anymore, I just enjoy the internet so much with it and he shook his head, said amazing and just walked away. Now, I really do think this is a step forward in the connected TV experience, it makes it easy and like Sky Plus in the UK made PBRs easy. We want to make consuming and finding internet video easy on a range of TV devices. 
So Tess, thanks very much for the opportunity to show it to IBC 2010. Okay, thank you all very much for your attention. If you'd like to know more, you can see Ian and his colleagues on the stand. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Ian. Okay.